Hey out there. Welcome. This is Ronnie Bincer, the Hangout Helper. We're going to be doing a show today which is talking about YouTube live events versus Hangouts on Air. And I have some friends with me in the panel down here. And on the far left, I think that's where he is, is Bern Rexer. He's going to be our featured guest. Bern, say hello, please. How you guys doing? Great. And then next to him, we've got two other friends that have helped me do some testing that we're going to talk about as part of our show. Brian Gunderson, howdy, and Nicole Murphy. Hi. And they're going to be interacting as part of our show when we get into some of the Q&A and questions and things like that. So we want to welcome everybody here to the show. Uh, primarily, we want to point out the fact that a big thing happened recently in the fact that YouTube Live or YouTube Live events has been available or become available to the masses. And what that means is in the past, not that many people had it, and then they rolled it out so that a thousand subscribers, you had to have a thousand subscribers on your YouTube channel. If that was you, you had the ability to go get it and use it. Now they've lowered the bar all the way down to 100. So if you can have 100 subscribers on your YouTube channel, you have access to YouTube Live. And so what we're trying to do today is discuss the differences and the similarities between Hangout on Air, which is a broadcasting tool, and YouTube Live, which is another broadcasting tool. So, in case you don't know who I am, I am Ronnie Bincer, the Hangout Helper. I help people learn how to use Hangouts. I've been doing that for quite some time, and a lot of people have gotten a lot better at it because I've been able to help them. So, hopefully, I can help you in the future if we haven't met yet. So, that's sort of my experience. I come from a training background. I used to use computer graphic programs like Photoshop and stuff and train people. So. That's my background. Let's talk about Burn, our featured guest. He has come from the live television world, from the live streaming world, and he has a company called MXPI. And Burn, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Media X Presentations, Inc., we've been around for 13 years, uh, provide consulting and production work, uh, and very much involved with live television and, and video production, but also live streaming from, from the very get-go. Um, and, and just very excited uh, when YouTube enabled live streaming and watching the news and the ability now that uh, most people have uh, to, to broadcast their, their message. And, and so it's, it's real exciting. Cool. All right, let's talk about, I want to define some things here so we can get it real clear so everybody knows what we're talking about. We're going to talk about what a Hangout is. We're going to talk about what's a Hangout on Air. And then what is YouTube Live, just in basic definitions. So here we go. A Hangout, which... Many people are getting confused lately because there's a th there's three of them now, but the most common use of the word hangout is technically called a hangout video call, and it's a private video conversation with up to 10 people, maybe 15 depending on your account setup, and that's not recorded, it's not broadcast, it's a private meeting room. That's called a hangout video call, okay? That's just what many of us have been using and loved for quite a while. Then there's a thing called a hangout on error which is the broadcast live streamed version of a Hangout video call. You have to go through a different method. You go to the left side now, you click a button, start your Hangout on Air, then it's live broadcast through your computer, through YouTube to the internet. And it's pretty cool. A lot of people have been using it for a while. Then now we've got this next thing called YouTube Live, or sometimes it's called YouTube Live Events or Live Events. There's all kinds of names for it. Its basic format has one camera broadcasting live through the internet using YouTube. And correct, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, Burn, but I think this is sort of competing to Justin TV or Livestream or um, Ustream. That's right. Yeah, and there's a there's a few others, uh, but YouTube uh, it, it's uh, it it offers uh, the fact that it's free. Okay, and that, that's a big deal. So Hangouts on Air, that's a good point. Hangouts on Air are free. So is live stream. So one versus the other, that's what this show's about. And I want to, before we get too far into it, I want to point out that Bern Rexer, our featured guest here, has a community on Google Plus called YouTube Live Streaming. It's the community about this. So you're going to want to jump on over there if this is something that's really, really interesting to you. So And we've got a link for it in the description, which is over there. I don't know where one, one of these signs. So let me, let me ask a couple questions from the perspective of a person that's done Hangouts on Air for quite a while. Now I'm looking into YouTube Live. 
I want to bring that to the forefront. What is it that I'm wanting to look at and what do I care about? So here's when I, when I start a uh, Hangout on Air, I get in, I set up my room, and I hit the Start Broadcast button. And my little webcam built into my computer automatically sends out the signal into YouTube world and everybody can see it. And it's easy for me to add extra people like you guys down into the film strip and we can have an interna interactive conversation. That's my world with Hangouts on Air. It's really cool and it makes a video by the time we're done automatically. Really, really cool. It sits on YouTube. Now, that's my world. It's a public broadcast. When I move my head over to the live area, the YouTube live stream area, the live, live events, I don't know what to call it. Um, when I get over there, I get a little bit different perspective because I don't know what I'm doing there yet. Okay, this is new for me. So the ability to just go over there and hit a button to start the broadcast seems to be missing from my perspective. And so, Bern, can you tell us sort of the general setup process that you would go through to do a live event, please? Yeah, well, you, you start with uh, a camera uh, or a microphone, but, but uh, your camera needs to go into a capture device. Uh, and, and there's a variety of different cards that will go into a Mac computer or a PC. And then there's also some hardware encoders. So it's a camera into a capture device. And then there's software uh, that, that does the encoding. And software, popular software, is going to be Wirecast. Uh, and, and there's another one, Flash Media Live Encoder. Uh, that software connects to the YouTube media servers. And you, you control that through the live interface that, that you've seen, Ronnie, which is uh, uh, once you hit start, then you're broadcasting out. That's, that's it in a nutshell. OK. Let me bring up a comment that I can do as a Hangout on Air guy um, using a tool called Comment Tracker. And this is Michelle saying, YouTube Live has just one camera. Is that right? And I'm going to answer it quick, and then, Bern, you can add some more. That is right in its most basic setup, but it could have multiple cameras. Am I correct? Yeah, there's, there's, it, it, you can webcast anything that your program output uh, is providing. So if you've got a switcher, and the switcher is switching multiple cameras, multiple sources, slides, video playback, that switcher has a program output, a single output, and that goes into the encoder. And so what the audience sees is uh, a full production just like television. Now, there's, there's one interesting feature that YouTube Live has, though, uh, in the settings, and those are multiple cameras. These are separate streams, and these are user controlled. And so, for instance, you might have two or three uh, cameras set up for uh, a, a musical performance, a band or something, a concert, and you've got one camera that's behind the drummer, and that is encoded separately. And what the user sees when you're using that multi-camera function through the YouTube Live uh, feature, they, they are able to select. So they, let's say that they're watching uh, uh, the, the main camera, and they want to go see the behind the drummer camera, or they want to see stage left camera. And there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, application and potential to that. But so the, those the, are, the user themselves can actually click on the video while it's playing and choose which camera they want to see? Yeah, there's little thumbnails that'll be in the top uh, left of the uh, of the player, okay. uh, but but as far as how many cameras can you use to to stream live, as as many as you're you're capable of uh, uh, of uh, you know featuring and producing. Okay, let me let me set the stage here for a second. If it's just me doing a live broadcast, I can use Hangout on Air, and I could use YouTube Live. I could do the same thing in both places. I believe there's probably advantages or disadvantages or challenges in both places. But to me, of course, it's my experience. Hang on an area is more simple. It's easier. I don't have to buy extra equipment. I can do this with my built-in webcam. However, the quality does suffer a bit. But let me bring something up on the screen that someone's pointing out that I'd like to make a public announcement for. And that is that you just saw that Hang on an Air are now recorded onto YouTube in HD. Yep, that's correct. It's 720p, and that's for everybody now. So there it is. Um, now, but the 720p quality out of a Hangout on Air, I promise you, is not the same quality as a YouTube Live. The YouTube Live is better 
720p, if that makes any sense. It has to do with the way things are encoded, the frame rates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is where it starts to get a little more technical, but I believe those that are interested in the higher technical learning curve will probably want to move over into this YouTube live area if you're good enough with one camera and not having as much interaction. So, Bern, help me out with this. I'm used to the Hangout on Air being a very interactive tool. I can bring comments onto the screen. I can interact with re what you call remote guests, people that are at different locations, pretty easily. It's very consumerized. It's pretty simple. There's buttons. You click them, they show up. In the YouTube Live world, is it that easy, or what's what goes on there? Well, I think the interface itself uh, is is very good. Um, I think it's it's very user friendly, but the complications and the challenges come to the actual encoding and the production side. En encoding can can get to be complex. You're dealing with compression. You're dealing with bit rate. Um, you're dealing with all sorts of different signals and such. And and this is great um, if you want that control. Uh, and and you know you always have to to look at your your content. You know, do you really need 720 HD? Because if you're just doing a talking head, you know, sometimes you don't need all that, all those, you know, frames per second, and and uh, you you might not need all all the bits per second. Uh, you know, so you always have to just ask yourself if you're doing graphics, it definitely helps to hire uh, to have a, a higher bit rate, um, and you do have more control over that when you're encoding. Um, even though that, and you have to remember that. If it's 720p, this is just a, a resolution. It's actually not bits per second, and your bits per second is is a little bit more flexible. Um, the more bits per second that your encoder is is using, the more CPU that that uh, that your box has, and so you always have to consider those. So yes, it's it's a bit more complex on on the encoding side. Uh, the interface itself, I think, is is great though. So let me let me ask this as a summary, and Nicole or Brian, if you guys want to chime in on this, please feel free to do so. As a summary to one versus the other, I'm going to say that the average person that's new to using video, stick with a Hangout on Air because this is easier, it's more consumer friendly, you can get right in, click a button and you're on. If you come from a background of video live production, the live on air part of YouTube is more valuable to you. You've got more control, you've got more choices, but for the average consumer, they may not want all those choices. Does that sound about right to you guys? Yeah, um, I know that I've been in several public hangouts by Google with you know celebrities like Macklemore and some X Games people, and I think that the the YouTube live events would be a lot better for that because I could be in control with what I see right from different camera angles. Right. So if and, you're more into the production world and you've got right. more, you got more equipment you want to play with. Right. So like. You know, concerts, things like that. I I would have loved to be able to see what I wanted to see and not what the the person running the hangout wanted me to see because sometimes you know they're not that great at blue box. Oh, so you're talking people. you're talking about as the viewer side. You right, like viewer like, side. Yeah. Okay. And you with glass on, right? Look at you. <laughs> well, uh, now here's the thing. Will this turn into multiple cameras for YouTube Live? I don't know. Well, it, it, it'd be nice if it did. Pretty cool. So, Nicole, you got any comments on that usability factor? Yeah, well, as I was listening to both of you describe the difference between Hangout on Air and the live YouTube, I immediately just started um, deciphering who I would use the two services with. And I think that Hangouts on Air is great for um, individual people, you know, the, the small business owner, entrepreneurs, and when big businesses want to be more approachable, like when they hang, you know, for example, when they, they hop on a Twitter stream and they have a live chat. And then I would assume that, or I would suggest really that if we're going to go with the YouTube live stream, it's more of a branded, planned out um, event. And so that's kind of where I'm looking at this as the two different, you know, I think they're both very powerful, but, do you, you know, as Byrne said, you know, sometimes we don't need that power and we can go this way, and sometimes we really want to ramp it up and put a, a nice, polished, branded piece together so we use this tool. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it right now. Okay, okay, let me bring up a comment here that ties into what you just said. 
Uh, it might be hard to read because of the, the length of it. If you guys can try to keep your comments shorter, uh, there's a better chance I can bring them up everyone can read them. This is Mark asking, he's saying you can use an event invitation in, a Google, cal in Google Calendar or the inter interface of both of them tied together basically to help promote your scheduled Hangout on Air. And this is what we did for this particular thing that everybody's here watching probably. How do you promote your YouTube live broadcast and do you just tell folks to come to your channel at a certain date and time? I believe there's actually more power to the scheduling of this on the YouTube live side. Is that correct, Bern? It's uh, I, that's definitely one way to promote your your live streaming event. Set up a calendar uh, through through Google calendars or through Google events. Uh, you oh, generally putting a, a trailer together, uh, and and you can promote that video. You could spend money. You can do a AdWords for video. A trailer uh, and that's very a powerful. Teaser, like a teaser a video. A teaser, a trailer, a little thirty second that says this event's going to occur, and. Um, and and then you with the with the actual event that you've created, um, you can switch the URL up so anyone that joins that event later on, um, you know, will see that video that's playing as as well. But there's a lot of different ways to promote uh, live streams, and it's very important that you spend a lot of resources on promoting um, because you know a lot of people they just don't know about your live event. Okay, let and, me let uh, me let me interject something here. There's a technical term called event. Google Plus have a tool called Events. It's called the Google Plus Events tool. I use that, and when appropriate, I'll actually put a streamer or a trailer teaser video in the event before it even goes live. So the same process can be done inside a Google Plus event. When you're talking about events, are you talking about calendar events, or what do you mean, burn by event? It, it, the, the same, the same that uh, that you've set up for for this Hangout on Air. You can set it up for uh, a live stream, and it's got a, a link in in there. Um, and and remember too that uh, you know some good resources on this is through the the YouTube uh, uh, live streaming guide and the, and the Creator's Playbook. Uh, and it mentions uh, some of the ways to, to market. But what is important is that you definitely do market it. Yeah, but I, I know that inside the YouTube Live interface, there's a place to schedule an event ahead of time. It's kind of like you can have your link ready to go a week, a month, a year ahead of time. And that's something that's you, can't right. really, you can't really do very easily with a Hangout on Air. You can make the package, which I use like the event tool, to package my Hangout on Air and share that ahead of time, but isn't it possible to share your live event link, which is created inside the YouTube Live area? You, it is possible to do that, um, and you you need to ask yourself a question if you want to do that. And the reason being is that if you create that event, that live event, that live stream, uh, and you've got the URL for it, that's a source URL. And it, it, it essentially, if anything happens and you have to change your event, you've already promoted that URL out, um, you know, you've wasted a little bit of promotion. So sometimes you might want to promote a landing page instead. Uh, so, but, but at the same time, YouTube makes it very easy to promote that URL. And, and um, uh, it, you know, so it's, it's very flexible in that regards. So you've locked down a URL that will become the live video at the time. And that's something different with a live YouTube Live that you can do which you cannot do with a Hangout on Air. That's right, and what, what's great about that is that if you schedule the start time, let's say uh, two weeks ahead, and a user clicks on that link, uh, the live stream URL link, then they're going to see a countdown. Uh, so they know that they're in the right place. Of course, you've got your, your title and your description and metadata. Okay, cool. I'm going to bring up a comment from Al over there. He's commenting on YouTube right now. So it's kind of like a live event is a real, t real. I'm going to stress the word, real TV production with multiple cameras, great for events, where uh, Hangouts are cozy video conferences. Okay, that's, you know, it's one way to, to look at it. I think, and in fact, I've seen a fair amount of professionally run Hangouts on Air with the Hangout on Air thing, and, you know, I've been doing that for a while. So I agree that the live stream can be more professional looking, I think it takes more professional quality equipment, and that equipment for many people is going to be a little bit out of their price range. And not only the equipment, and I'm not dissing it, I'm just pointing it out, okay? I think that equipment, as it gets more and more expensive, the more likely you're going to want to move over into the live event so you can 
you know, get the bang for your buck. And you also need to have better internet speed. So the Hangout on Air, think of it this way, is kind of dumbed down for the average user. It allows us to have relatively low quality stuff but still make a decent show. Whereas the live event, I believe, if you're going to do that right on YouTube, you actually need to have better quality equipment. Would you agree with that, Bern? Not necessarily. It's, it's, you know, that used to be the case. Um, you know, but it's getting easier and easier to do live webcasts on a professional level. I mean, just a few years ago, you know, you had to spend thousands of dollars to get a multi-camera switching system, and nowadays you you've got uh, uh, you know it's a lot less of a barrier to entry to to get involved with it. Um, but uh, what is, what is the certainly price for there's a multi, more. What's the price for a multi-camera switcher? I thought it was like fifteen hundred bucks for a decent one. Or more. Well, you, you, they've got software switchers now. So, so Wirecast no, hardware, is, a, is a software switcher. I want hardware. Hardware switchers for HD, SDI. I mean, they, they do run, you know, two thousand uh, or more. Um, but, uh, but, but, but again, software switchers are, are you know, kind of the, the wave to the future. Wirecast, TriCaster are two very popular ones, and and there's many of them that are out there. We're going to see much more on the market as as well. Uh, but again, you, you have to kind of figure out, well, what is your production? What do you need to do? Do you need lower thirds? Do you need graphics? Do you need video playback? Uh, and that sort of thing. And, you know, the more capability there is, uh, obviously, the more expensive that it, that it gets. Let me bring up a point. I talked with a friend, Dan McDermott, last night as prep for this. I was trying to do some research. He used to use or has used Wirecast for quite a while to do his show, which was a weekly show. He's decided to not use Wirecast any longer until he can get a more powerful machine because he needed more CPU capability because he couldn't do everything he wanted to do. He was using it. He just said it got a little bit too taxing with all the stuff. So, But he's going to go back to it probably because he sees the quality because of his high-quality Internet connection, but he's got to get a more expensive machine. He's got to get money, he's spending more money. Once you do that, I think you're going to be in that world, and he's doing the extra special stuff of bringing other people in, and you know, almost like making it a hangout on air where it's very interactive. That is great for many people, but for I think for the average user, that might be a little bit more than what they're willing to invest in, especially when they're first getting started. At least now, again, I'm the hangout helper, right? So I really like the hangout tool. Um, so I'm prejudiced. I'll tell you right up, right up front. I think you have to ask as well what your content is, uh, and and who is your audience. Those are always the first questions that that uh, need to be asked. Okay, so um, just real quick summary and benefits and features, and then we'll get into some other stuff. And I've got some special screen share to fo to share with folks too. Um, I would say, for and you can fill in the gaps if I'm not quite right with that. But I would say that. Um, the benefit of a Hangout on Air is it's simple, or simpler, right? And it's consumerized, meaning there's buttons you can click that'll just let you turn things on, like this lower third. You can make your own custom ones relatively easily. You can bring in comments from the outside. These are all little extra tools that are just built in. And it's true that it's changed to 720p quality, but honestly, that's not going to be that visible to you unless you're on a screen share which, by the way, is the primary reason they did it, because then you'll be able to see that little text and read it. So the screen share capability is really improved now for the Hangouts on Air. That's the, those are the advantages. The disadvantages are the fact that the quality isn't necessarily as high as you'd like it to be. Another disadvantage for some is it's difficult if they're new to it. You know, find me, the Hangout helper. I'll help you make it less difficult. Um, but now, switching over to the live event or the live YouTube Live, to me, that's a little higher learning curve. Any of these has a learning curve, right? But it's a little bit steeper. And it tends, in my mind, even though you said not necessarily, I'm going to, my, I'm going to sort of push back and say, I don't think you're going to want to do a lot of your streaming with live events with your webcam so much. You're probably going to want a better quality camera where you can zoom in, you can focus, you can change your depth of field, those kind of fancy things. And then you're going to need probably to get beyond the free version of Wirecast, which is free, and go to the $500 or the $1,000 version of the software. And those are great options, but they're more expensive for the average user. Would, would you agree or go ahead and push back? Feel free. I, I agree. I, I think that there's, a, there's some good points. And, you know, I guess you have to remember, though, that, that every media production is different. Uh, and, and, you know, so 
Uh, and it's it's not easy because of that. There's always questions to be asked, but it's fun because of that. Uh, I enjoy it because of that. And you know, I, I, the the way I look at Hangouts on Air is I, I look at it more as a collaborative and conversational you know piece. I mean, the the what we're doing right now is we're able to collaborate with you know four of us here and then broadcast that out, and that's very powerful. Um, and and certainly you you can do that you know through a live stream, but but you know the accessibility you know with a hangout on air you know is more so it's it's cross compatible you know with browsers and and different types of uh, OSs uh, and and you know being able to to use the webcam on your on your you know computer you know so that there's just a, a, a lot of benefits you know in, in that regards as well live streaming is getting easier it will continue to get easier uh, and and the the functionality with the live events. Uh, I, I say that again. Now that you only have to have a hundred subscribers, you're going to have more and more people that are going to get involved with it, and we're going to have more experts that are out there, and and we will see more broadcasts go out, and and with whatever application that you use, the the power of live broadcast is is really important, and I, I think the the you know the great thing you know Ronnie is that at the end of our show we're going to have a complete presentation. And it'll be available almost immediately, uh, and and it's we don't have to go back and edit it. Maybe we want to, but uh, but most of the times, you know, it's it's a uh, um, you know it's a documentation of history, and there's there's something that's very important about that. Okay, let me bring up a couple of quick questions, and then we'll get into the next part of the topic. Jason's asking, is there a time limit for the length of a live event? I can tell you what it is for sure. For a hangout on air, it's four hours. What what about a live event? Live events right now are 36 hours, um, and uh, I, I don't know where YouTube's going to go when it comes to 24-7 to live streams. I think it's very important that you have 24-7 live streams, and those, those are going to be like uh, you know cameras that are looking at a street or city or uh, landscape, uh, environmental cameras, as well as animal cameras, which are, you know, have always been very popular. Uh, if you've got the old platform for for YouTube live streaming, then then that does allow uh, for 24/7. But but I don't I haven't seen a lot of documentation. I don't know where Google or YouTube is going to go with that. But I think it's important. I hope that they do you know offer it. Okay, and then another question. Uh, John Bowers is asking if using multiple cameras on YouTube Live does the replay video just use the main camera? You know the ability to choose which camera. Which which one by default is there? I, I, you know, I, I haven't tested it thoroughly. I believe that all the cameras that you have are part of uh, the the uh, the event, uh, but um, you know that's something that uh, I, I need to delve in just a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, and I'm looking for another question right here. Actually, I'll bring this one up. This came in a little while ago. It's um, from Daniel. He's saying we have 50 to 70 contributors on our network. Unless we have a studio, which they don't have yet, response. If they unless they have a studio responsible for providing the stream, it would be a huge learning curve for our contributors. Some of our contributors are explorers in the deep woods via satellite and things, and that I think that just basically goes to the the point, or the idea that if you can make it work with Hangout on Air, that would be a good entry point. And if you find you need to get to a higher level of quality that Hangout on Air can afford you, then maybe start shifting over into that. YouTube Live Place, is that as, as far? You know, as far as how easy is it for either of them? Um, and it, again, it's getting easier. I mean, you you did a show last year, South by Southwest, and and you used your your mobile phone, and to prove a point, um, and you know, which is great, which was fantastic, uh, and and you can do the same thing now with with various types of equipment. Uh, I mean, Teradek makes a they, they make a lot of great products where you can do a lot of wireless, um, and you're using the, the networks that are that are around you. You know, more bandwidth uh, is is coming around the corner, uh, and again, the accessibility. They're making you know smaller cameras. We're going to see cameras that actually do encoding themselves. You just turn the camera on, you basically punch a button, it connects to your YouTube account, and it'll start streaming. And and that's not too far in the future. So think about you know these guys that are out in the woods. You know they're doing a, a satellite, uh, uh, you know, connection. Uh, you know that that capability isn't too far off. Okay, Mark Vang wants to correct my wording. That's fine. He says he would instead of calling "hang on an air," dumb down. He's calling saying it should be entry level. I'll 
take it, you know, acknowledge. There you go. <laughs> okay. Now, but see, to me, this is what's the beauty of the Hangout on Air, which is not quite yet built in to the live event, is this ability to bring comments visually onto the screen and just interact with people while they're watching live. Sarah Hill, one of my Hangout heroes, calls it yelling at the TV. I mean, this... <laughs> This is this ability for people on the outside to yell back at me, and I can bring it right onto the conversation, and this is incredibly cool. It's very interactive, I think. And I, I don't know if the live event has that yet, or if it ever will. I have a question for Burn, and I don't know if you guys have tested this yet. Um, all the video cameras, the DLS DLSRs, and the um, video cameras that are coming out with the wireless options to auto-upload to a social network. Have you guys tested to see if that can actually use the YouTube live stream? So you're just taking a video camera and then um, broadcasting live? There's there's not anything out there on the market that I've seen yet that, okay. that have uh, the YouTube profiles built in, uh, but Again, you give it about a year, and, and right, we will exactly, start seeing yeah. that more often. Uh, okay. But there are cameras, though, there, and there's there's modules that you can connect to a camera that'll stream out to to other services. So we we know again when it comes to YouTube that uh, things are around the corner. Right. Well, this is I think this is a definitely a huge bridge to where it was, you know, to now. This is a, definitely an exciting leap. But for some of us who deal with a lot of the small businesses and whatever, I think that it's still a little bit outside of that reach. I suggest if you're going to put the money towards a branded icon and you want to go towards, you know, a really polished stream and look like Alicia Keys or Steven Spielberg, you go, you know, you, you pony up and you hire a team to do the YouTube Live. Um, but I suggest that anyone that's just starting out or just playing with it, you get to know you get to you know how to use the Hangouts on air and then decide if you want to make that step. Okay, let me bring this up here on the screen. Um, help us burn if he's right or wrong. He's saying, uh, this is Jerry saying, a price comparison, guesstimates. Okay, if you're using a Hangout on air, you could potentially do that with a $400 laptop. If you're using YouTube Live, he's saying $2,500 plus for something. I'm not sure what that's for. I guess... Or the the computer? I think that's the total cost. Maybe twenty five hundred total. Yeah, a thousand for the computer, fifteen hundred for a camera, maybe a card switching equipment. Any any thoughts on that? It's uh, the 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 price to stream YouTube Live is is just the same price as Hangout on Air. If you've got that's a free. a laptop, yeah, and which is free. I mean, if you've got a laptop that has a webcam, you can use that webcam to stream live, not through a Hangout on Air, but. You have to have an encoder, though, and Flash Media Live Encoder is a free encoder. That's that's the most one of the most popular ones to use. Now, It'll isn't, see Wirecast, your web... isn't Wirecast for YouTube also free, and that's a, an encoder? Well, exactly, yeah. Those are the two probably most popular right now, but there's there's all sorts of other ones out there that are that are worth looking into and, and testing out. Um, okay, myth, again, the, the, the price myth points busted. Minimal. Busted the myth. In other words, you could use a laptop and use YouTube Live, and you're good to go. Right, because you you can get those other free software encoders. It's simply a learning curve differential. That's sort of the difference in my mind. Yeah, I, but you have to have uh, uh, you know again you have to have an encoder, Flash Media Live encoder, and then of course you have to have a camera. But the laptops now they've all got webcams built in. Right, but you also in in this is I've seen this and I can document this for you. Hangouts on Air can deal with lower quality bandwidth better than live, YouTube Live, from what I've seen. The Hangout on Air seems to be able to, I can't use the word dumb it down, right? Entry level the stream such that it still comes across, and if for some reason it's really bad, bam, it shows you your icon instead of the video feed. It's just automatic. What happens when you're a live event and your internet goes... Anything? Yeah, and those are definitely some things that you have to think about before starting a live event. You need to know what your bandwidth is before the event, and and you need to have consistent bandwidth throughout. And that's probably the biggest mistakes that a lot of people make is they they go up to the highest bandwidth that they that they think, and you always need to think about the lowest first. Um, and and so you 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 will uh, if you're if you're using a um, uh, a particular stream, let's say it's uh, uh, 
two megabits per second. YouTube will take that two megabits per second and, and, and it ends up being, you know, a 720p stream, for instance, and it will make uh, separate streams. So when the, when the user connects, they'll have a choice um, uh, of, of if the user doesn't have enough bandwidth to, to see the stream. But as far as, as you uploading uh, to the YouTube servers, you know, definitely uh, don't use more than, than what, you, what you have and give yourself a little headroom on top of that. Okay, let me bring in my friend Dan McDermott has a comment here. He's the gentleman I was referring to that is changing and going back and buying more equipment. Anyways, he says YouTube Live is just a pipe like Ustream or Justin TV. You can use a camera or bring in a signal with an ingest card. The advantage of Hangouts on Air is a very large feature set, switching of multiple participants, graphics, etc. And then we can't read the rest because this comment's too long, but I'll read it here. One key difference is that the a Hangout on Air is running a few hundred kilobytes, but YouTube Live is running a few thousand kilobytes. YouTube Live is dramatically better quality if, underline if, you have the upload bandwidth. So that's, that's a good summary, I think. So if you got the equipment, you've got the connection, and you got the skills, go for it. In fact, even if you don't have that, you can go for it. My guess, <laughs> my guess is there's going to be a lot of people bumping on over there, and then they're going to go Poo, back down. So the amount of people using live events is probably going to skyrocket for a little while, and then some of them will come back home to the Hangout on Air and say, okay, I'm more comfy here. A lot of them, if they're high-end users, will love it over there and will push that and use it. Any other thoughts on that? I, I think, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead, Mark. Right. I, I just think that the accessibility now is so wide open, and, you know, one of the, one of the reasons that I'm, I'm, you know, pretty, uh, uh, I, I support YouTube in regards is that they've got such a good market. They've, they've got accessibility. They're on every uh, device that's out there. They're also on the set-top boxes on your televisions. And so the reachability uh, is tremendous. Now, live streaming doesn't work on all of them just yet, but, but it will. Give it some time. Live streaming has always uh, changed over the years as far as standards and, and codecs and everything else. It'll continue to improve. Uh, but again, the, the ubiquity of, of YouTube is, is tremendous. And if you're already using YouTube for your on-demand and your archives and you've got a live event, it just makes sense uh, in that regards. But now you're saying YouTube. I'm on a Hangout on Air and I'm using YouTube, right? So it's both, both places start differently, but they end up in the same place inside YouTube. The outcome is the same. And, uh, you know, whether you're using a Hangout on Air or if you're using li the live streaming feature, the outcome is a, is a live stream through the YouTube channel. Okay, let me bring up a comment from David. He's saying, that would make sense, Ronnie. Thanks. As a Hangout on Air are for the general public, where YouTube Live is for the pro. At least that's what he thinks, and I would tend to agree with him. Um, Jason, I, oh, go ahead. I, I think that it, you know, everyone should give it a try because the accessibility is, is there. Sure, but remember, you're a pro. You came from it from that side, right? You didn't come from the side of, I got a laptop and I can turn on the webcam. Ooh, cool. That's not how you got to this world. Right. I, well, you know what it starts with is a message. Do you have something to say? Do you have something that's important? You know, will will people listen? Um. <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, see, Brett Campbell has a comment. He says, "What's what about Nexus or iPad? Meaning, will the Hangout app, for example, eventually be able to stream to live?" Um, I'm not sure I fully really understand that question. Uh, the Hangout app on an iPad now can do a live Hangout on Air. Can it do, can it interface with YouTube Live and be the camera? I guess this is his question. Do you, do you know that, Bern? Uh, it's, there's not, um, the application that YouTube have is a, it's called Capture. And, um, and, and I do think that, that it's going to be able to, to start to stream live as well. Um, you know, there's a couple of ways to, to make your, your mobile phone stream live. Of course, Livestream and Ustream, uh, they've got some applications where your mobile phone can stream out to those channels. And uh, I believe that, that YouTube will follow suit. 
Okay, and Jason has a question. Is there a tool? This is talking about the live side and how much bandwidth you need. Is there a tool that will help us estimate the necessary bandwidth to broadcast an event? And how do we know if we have enough bandwidth, like a one-hour church service, for example? Uh, you, you, you know, know, know what your service is, you know, whoever your provider is, and you, you, you pay a certain you know, amount of money to get a certain amount of bandwidth. Uh, and but you can use uh, various tools that are online to see what your upload capability is and, and preparation is the most important I, I think that certainly there's preparation for for hangouts on air but there's a lot of preparation to, to do a live stream uh, if you've got a bigger pr production obviously and preparation for understanding your upload capability is uh, is the most important Okay, let me shift gears or transition into another topic here for a moment. There is the ability to do what I call a hybrid, and because I'm the Hangout on Air guy, I, when the live event thing came up and someone pointed out that I could do some things on the live event side to my Hangout on Air, I went, really? And I went over there, and I started poking. And when I poke, I discover things. And everybody in this film strip helped me discover some really cool stuff. And I made a post about it a couple days ago, and it's gone pretty viral. The idea that we can actually let YouTube record our private broadcasting. I went in there to try to see if I could make a Hangout on Air private to a group of membership people or whatever, and that failed. But, and Nicole was all happy about this, and I'm like, ah, so what? And then all of a sudden it, it dawned on me, that is actually valuable. And then we turned it into this big thing. So I'm going to do a screen share here of the process where you can start your Hangout on Air and then you go over if you have this enabled, right? You gotta have a hundred subscribers, you gotta sign up for it, blah, blah, blah. But once it's enabled, then you start your Hangout on Air. Before you go live, you're able to jump on over to the YouTube live area and then mess with stuff. And so I'm gonna do a screen share to show what that looks like here. Uh, so here we go. Give it a second to show up on the screen. So everybody seeing that? Yeah. yeah, I got it, Ronnie. Okay. So this is our first screen right here. We're in the Hangout on Air, and we have not started yet. That's why we see the big red button above my head that says Start Broadcast. And I've got that window on top of YouTube Live, which is on the left, and I'm clicking on the red area that says Live Events, and automatically there is our event that has not yet gone live. It's there ready for us to do some stuff to. So let's go to the next slide. You're going to go to that particular event, click on the link below it that says edit or it says basic info, and it takes you in here where you can do stuff. Now, the thing that I'm trying to point out that a lot of people are wanting to know how is right here. In the privacy settings, we go over to where it says public, and then we click on the drop down, we choose private, and then we save it. We didn't add any names of people. That doesn't work. But if you just save it without adding names and you verify right there, you verify that it says the word saved, you're good to go. And then all of a sudden your Hangout on Air is not actually public, it's private. And that's kind of interesting because that was not possible too long ago. And, you know, there it is. So I'm going to turn off my screen share because I want to get back here into the conversation. Now, there's more to that teaching and that understanding then we have time to do right here and I want to use this sort of as a way to announce something that's new that's coming up I am about to announce something new Nicole do we have do we have a drum roll oh my goodness there we go there it is this is something brand new that I'm doing it's called a private membership community and it's going to be called hangout mastery where we're going to go over the details and get into the nitty-gritty of all this good stuff dealing with hangouts so if you want to get in on the what's called the pre-launch sign-up list, so you're saying you're just interested, you don't, you're not signing up, you're just getting into the, and you're going to be able to lock down the pre-launch membership pricing, you can click on that link right down there. It's also on the side. It's also in this video. It'll be everywhere. You can go, you can go to it. Okay. So I'm going to turn off some of the extra graphics and just leave that up there for the remainder of the show. So there is my little announcement for how do you integrate all of these things together. There's some pretty cool stuff about integrating both live stream and Hangouts on Air. And not only is it just for the private stuff, 
I mean, in other words, we can make a private video recording of our activity using YouTube instead of having to do it with a third-party piece of software. I think most of you have seen that by now. Um, but there's also something that's near and dear to my heart, the ability to juice up your video, hang out on air video before you go live. It's called video SEO, search engine optimization. I can add in tags. I can add in description text. All that good stuff that I always have to do after the show, I can do before we go live if I'm using that live event area. So the two, when they work together, pretty, pretty cool. Any other comments, guys, down there? Well, clearly, I think that this is really exciting. And I saw um, a question in the comments earlier about, can you use Hangouts on Air as a live, as a WebEx to replace your webinars? And this is one way that you absolutely can do that, um, where you, you know, you're limited in the amount of people, but then, you know, use this as an exclusivity piece to your marketing where, you know, you get in with the other nine people or eight people and, and you know, now you have access to actually interacting and, and, and whatnot. So it's super, super exciting for me. I'm just very happy about it. <laughs> yeah. no, I don't, I don't want to ignore this. This is true. David is also pointing out, because he's helped me promote these, that I'm also doing some Ronnie Bincer workshops. So that's another thing that you might want to check into. Check out David's information and, and he'll, you'll find all kinds of goodies stuff about that. So um, let's, let me bring in something else from the stream. There's a question. I'm just going to start winging it here. Uh, Jeffrey has a question. When you set up the live event, it shows you the bandwidth needed. Actually, there's a comment. When you set up the live event, it shows you the bandwidth needed for each of the resolution choices. It doesn't show you what your current bandwidth is, however. You're going to need to do something like speedtest.net or something like that to verify. Does that sound right? It, it, yeah, that's correct. Um, but, but it will tell you if it's not receive if the servers are not receiving the the bandwidth that, that you've configured. If you think that you're going to do a certain amount and it's not receiving that, you'll get an error message. Yeah. Scott's and the, the thing about and, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but 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 what's important is that once you start your live event, you can't go back and and change those settings. So again, it's real important you understand your what your upload capability is. Okay. Scott is bringing up a very good point about my little membership thing. Unfortunately, I only learned this this morning. It has to be a lowercase m for members. It's because of the software I'm using to build this landing page, and I hate that, but I just found that out this morning. Yes, so lowercase m. Click on the link that you'll find that I've spelled with a lowercase m in various places. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to bring up a little more. Darius is saying he's in for the... Uh, Hang up mastery. It's going to be great. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, another thing. There's a lot. This is, whoa, the comments are starting to come in hot and heavy here. Hold on. I've got to pin this one up. Daniel's saying there were a lot of steps involved. You wouldn't be able to tell my contributors to follow those. However, if he was doing a, ver a corporate hangout, this would be very helpful because we like to record our web meetings using other tools. Let me explain some of the reasons why this technique that I just showed you is super important. I have been doing private sessions with clients for more than a year now using a second computer. That second computer was the video capture using a program that I call, tel it's called uh, ScreenFlow. You ScreenFlow or Camtasia, there's different ones that you might use. They also end up using my bandwidth. So I've got two computers simultaneously sucking my bandwidth, cutting it in half, and all of a sudden I don't have as quality a stream as I'd like to have. If I can let YouTube do the recording, let them do it. They got all these massive servers in the sky. They can handle it. So that's one of the really big advantages of letting YouTube make this recording of your private activity. And so it's very, very cool that we figured that out. I hope it's not a bug. I hope they don't turn it off, but you can use it right now. Burn. I think, Ronnie, the, the point of being able to do private events is, is huge. Um, and, you know, whether it's just a hangout um, and being able to have a private group, uh, or if it's a, a live stream, and and so what is it? It's uh, up to five thousand. Is that uh, is that the amount? I think that, uh, but that's huge. I mean, think about if you're you're doing a uh, an all hands meeting as a corporation, or if you're an association and you've got your members, or if there's education or something like that. I think that that capability uh, that you, Google yeah, you, and YouTube makes that very easy. You bring up a very important distinction. I've been talking about, with that little trick that I showed, I'm talking about using Hangout on Air 
to do private videos and let YouTube make a recording of that. Okay, a private meeting up to 10 people. None of them can see it while it's live, but after it's done, it makes a video. You can then make it private and they can see it. No one can see it live. However, with live events, you can do a broadcast to a limited group of people. Isn't that right, Bern? Bern? That, that's right, and of, and of course that applies just to videos. But this is you know this is what's so great about Google Plus. This is how Google Plus ties into all all of the uh, you know that capability of uh, of being private, security, and and you know who gets permission to see it and, and who does it, and that's very powerful. Okay, now Dan McDermott and Brian, you may have a question. You can jump in right after this one. Dan McDermott yeah. saying that it does. On the live stream or live YouTube live site, it says it does tell you the bandwidth you're sending during the live event via the live controlled panel. You can also see the same for HO Hangouts on Air if you have live. So you can go back. I could actually go there now, I suppose, and, and see it. But um, you had a question, Brian? Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment um, about that private thing. I remember when, when we were testing it, we'd be having people comment because the... Um, because the actual, there's a public post right. of the private video. Yes, it's posted publicly, so it's like you're having a private meeting that's being recorded, but everybody knows about it, but they can't see it. Right so just, now, as part of my full set of instructions, right, I, <laughs> I I give you the option to go in after you've started your live broadcast to go into your public stream and delete that so that nobody even knows you're doing it. Okay, so that is part of the. A fuller set of instructions, yes. It's a good tip to know, though. Yeah. Now, Roosevelt has a question or a comment. Um, he's saying, if you drop your live event in YouTube Live, you cannot just go back. You have to restart with a different URL for that stream. Is that correct, Bern? Yeah, once you start your live event, um, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're going. And uh, so it's, you, you want to plan ahead of time. And that's why it's important to think about should you promote, once you created a live event before you started it, it gives you the URL of what that event is, but, but should you actually promote that source URL? Uh, and there's many times when you can, it's easy to do that, uh, but there's other times you might want to promote a landing page and where you can change the URL out if something goes about, and I think that's what he's, he's uh, covering. Yeah, and I promote, I tend to, when I'm in the Google Plus world, which I am a lot, I tend to promote the package that's holding the live activity, which is called a Google Plus event. Other people are promoting uh, Facebook now. Yes, I said that word. I'm sorry. Facebook, you can actually have your Hangout on Air through various page apps show live inside a Facebook page or community or area. You can also do it on your website. So there's lots of different options. You can build custom landing pages and just have them there. I'm doing that for a particular client. And later, I might make that more publicly available. Um, David? Just to give David some love here, um, here's the link to get to the uh, workshops. It's davidsbarter.com slash Ronnie dash Binser. Google, it's not showing on screen. <laughs> it's, so it's in the comments. Go click it there. Sorry, the, the comment's getting chopped off for some reason. Uh, the, the full it's not Ronnie there. Bin? Yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me let me talk. Let me bring something on the screen, and this is uh, interesting. Irene saying, "Isn't this in line with Google plan? Google's plans for help outs? Thinking of coaches and trainers makes sense to me. I use this tool right here for my help outs. In other words, I use PayPal. My customers go and they they pay the invoice for my private meeting, and then I can use that other thing to connect. It's true that if help outs exist, right? That's just a rumor. Nobody knows for sure." If that truly exists and it's a way to stick a quarter in the slot and pay for a certain amount of time inside of a Hangout, that's going to be really awesome, really, really cool. But until then, there's ways to go about doing it. Uh, Diane is saying, but you can delete the public stream of the post. This, I think, is when the activity gets chopped off and you, you're, you're toast. Um, you can delete the public stream of the post and also in the YouTube feed. This is the way I made private Hangout on Air. Oh, that's a different. Okay, sorry, we got too many topics going on. This is talking about making a private video. Um, generally, when I'm working with a client, we're talking confidential stuff, and so we don't want it ever to be seen live. Whereas you could do a live hangout on air, and it's public to anybody if they can find it. And then when 
You can delete it out of your stream. It's harder to find, but is it impossible? No. I, I'm a geek. I can find it. So if I can find it, someone else can find it. I want to make sure that when I'm doing my private activity with my clients that it is private and no one can see it. And that is what we were able to do with this special trick. Oh, here, I'll put it on the screen. You can pause and read. Okay, if you want to pause and read that, you can come back to this time and hear our recommended um, bandwidth opportunities along with the particular Thanks, Dan. Um, resolution. There's other fancy words for that, I'm sure, ingestion settings or, or those kind of things, but basically that's the concept. It's, it's uh, yeah, bits, bits per second. Always think about how many bits per second um, that you've got uh, as far as upload capability, and then you set your encoder uh, to those settings. Uh, YouTube allows you to use one encoded stream, the highest that you're capable of, and then YouTube will make l uh, lower bit rate streams uh, for the viewer or the end user in case they don't have enough to, to consume that. Okay, so uh, one more th tip from Dave Williams. He's saying that if you're looking for a low-cost software switcher, take a peek at vmix.com.au, and he says the free or the $59 version may meet your needs, and then he also said you learn about it at studiotech.tv slash stl 97. Okay, so think, let's wrap this. Oh, go ahead. I was going to wrap it up in I, just I, a second. I think it's important to, to know that, that software switchers, um, not only do they switch, but most of them now actually do the encoding as well. So you can have a separate encoder, takes the video, turns it into bits and bytes, spits it out to the media servers, or you can have a switcher. Again, those software switchers sometimes do the encoding as well, makes it, makes it easier. Okay, so thank you everybody for attending out there in the live world where you're adding comments. We're trying to bring them in as quick as we can as appropriate. We're going to go back to the event, back to YouTube, back to the places where you're adding these comments and answer questions if we didn't get to them as part of the show. And I appreciate you guys down being my guests down here and um, I hope this helps everybody understand some of the differences between YouTube live events and Hangouts on Air when you might use one over the other. Go over there, have fun, experiment, find out what you can, and uh, check in with this little membership area if you're interested to find out more details. And just for fun, click right up there if you want to go see me on Google+, because I'm going to put a link there that will take you right to me. So thank you, everybody, for being part of the show. And we'll probably have a follow-up if you want more particular details. Ask for it in the comments so that we'll know that there's an the interest there for maybe more technical understanding of how do you get going with your live event area on YouTube. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thank, thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.